Henry was a 10-year-old macho tabby cat with gigantic jowls who'd been on his own for his decade-long lifetime. He was in bad shape, though, and wasting away because his rotting teeth made it impossible to eat, and an upper respiratory infection had train-wrecked his energy body. But he did let the woman who trapped him pet him. He understood her intention was to help him out. Right before Thanksgiving, it was raining, and I, he was in a cage, and I said, okay, I'm taking him home. So I brought him home to get him well. First, they got his respiratory infection under control. Then they tackled Henry's rotten teeth. Everyone at heart, the homeless animal rescue team, was afraid of Henry. He hissed and spit when people came near and stayed at the highest levels of the cat trees in the shelter. He made an exception for Bonnie, the woman who had trapped him, allowing her to hold him, administer pills, pet him, and care for him. And he thrived under her care. But he was still nervous around other people, and he could barely eat with so many teeth gone. If somebody else was in the room, he'd come and sit on my lap and put his head under my arm. But Bonnie wasn't sure how Henry would do with the other half dozen cats in her house. So she kept him in a room downstairs until he got used to being indoors, observing his behavior. He was afraid of everything. If you had a hose, a broom, um, dogs that he would see from the upper deck, obviously in his 10 years he had been abused in every way he could by people throwing things at him or chasing him. Eventually, she tried letting him out into the rest of her cat population. The one thing when I let him out downstairs, he attacked my 20-year-old Clementine. And this happened like three times. And I said, that can't be. And I had fallen in love with Henry. He was just um, a sweetheart, and he obviously loved me. So I called Susan. Susan came to the house, and we did a, a communication. And Henry sat on my lap downstairs. And uh, Susan explained that, you know, I really wanted this to be his forever home, that this was real important to me but that he could not attack the other cats, and he especially couldn't attack Clementine. Clementine, if anybody hurt her, she, was, she had been with me forever, and this just would not work. And he told Susan that um, if I could please be patient with him, that he would definitely try never to do, to attack any of the cats again. But he asked that I realize that this had been his line of defense for his entire life. Attack first, and, and then you figure it out later. And um, so I said, OK. And so for a while, when I had him up, I would have him on a, a, a leash connected to his collar. But he never attacked any of my cats, never went after Clementine. In fact, he would sleep on the bed. She would be on this arm. He would sleep with his head in my hand right next to it. He never went after anybody after that. And Susan is, um, I have all the confidence in the world in dealing with her. And people often say, well, how can you do this over the phone? And I said, it works with a picture. I mean, it, it works. And it, it's worked time and again. And, and there are many other communications, and Susan has been very gracious in helping a lot of heart cats for us. And um, it's made a difference in adoption or not adopted with, with her. So it's pretty amazing. <laughs>